2023. And yet another historic hurricane has barreled into Florida, and just over a week prior, a rare hurricane hit Southern California. In the intervening period, on a Trumpless Republican presidential primary debate stage in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a day before record high temperatures would see schools in the city shut down, Vivek Ramaswamy, a, uh, if not the, leading non-Trump Republican presidential candidate proclaimed what many, if not most, Republicans believe, that climate change or at least the idea that anything ought to be done to mitigate or even adapt to the reality of climate change, is a hoax. Well, as a great, in heavy quotation marks, American conservative intellectual once put it, facts don't care about your feelings, and insurance companies certainly have the facts, and I am sure we're all aware in one form or another that they most definitely don't care about your feelings. And they seem pretty sure that climate change isn't a hoax. You see, the way insurance works is by having customers pay a regular premium in exchange for being able to make use of a service or receive cash should some catastrophic unforeseen expense arrive that they otherwise would have been unable to pay for. Like, for example, your home being annihilated in a world historic storm. Now, in order for the insurance company to make money, they have to ensure that the payouts they do make constitute a significantly smaller amount than what they receive from their customers. Now, there are plenty of ways to accomplish this. More positive examples are like providing incentives for less risky activities, and the more hostile means include finding creative ways to deny or limit payouts to customers by exploiting the gap between what customers think they'll receive versus what you actually have to pay them based on the contracts they've signed. But however you cut it, it really is just as simple as making sure that money in is a larger amount than money out. This presents insurance companies a problem when dealing with an increasingly extreme and volatile environment. To start with, it becomes more difficult to figure out how exactly large and frequent the payouts to customers in the future as natural disasters become more unpredictable and severe will be. To make up for this, insurance companies must charge ever higher premiums. Now the problem with charging ever higher premiums is that there is obviously a price point where the premiums that need to be charged are too high to expect consumers to be actually willing to pay. That is precisely a big motivating factor behind home insurance companies in particular pulling out of Florida recently. Why operate there and risk massive unforeseen insurance payouts that can only be mitigated by charging rates beyond what most people would be willing to pay for? So, the natural result is that, of course, competition for insurance providers is more limited in Florida, which adds an additional pressure that forces prices upward. So, the same disproportionately elderly, disproportionately conservative electorate that loves to elect maniacal clowns who fight tooth and nail against the climate change agenda, such as Rick, Medicare defrauder Scott for the Senate, and Ron, woke woke the solution DeSantis for governor, are the tip of the spear in getting wrecked by the world they've spent their lives building yearly as a result of falling victim to the same rational profit maximizing decision making they so eagerly champion. Of course, some time after they finish calling insurance companies woke for having the capacity to engage in the sort of rational cost benefit analysis they at times seem constitutionally incapable of, they'll do as all great rugged individuals and advocates of free market capitalism do when it's their rear end on the line, demand some sort of government intervention. However, the issue we've got here in this situation isn't some market failure, some quirk in the delicate tense between balancing market costs and public benefit. This circumstance, broadly speaking, is a runaway market success. This is a rare example of the free market actually meaningfully pricing in at least some of the costs associated with the climate change that our economic system has doomed us to. Yes, places on the front lines of climate catastrophe are in fact going to become significantly less livable and expensive. This does not apply only to home insurance costs, or insurance as a whole, but the maintenance of infrastructure and public services, along with more expensive and decreased access to all sorts of consumer products. All of these things are only going to become more costly to provide and maintain in climate precarious locations. Yet, to have some scheme where we use public money to subsidize private residency in such locations can be a classic case of robbing Peter to pay Paul. To the extent that we support people's continued inhabitants in areas that are chronically at risk of getting the brunt of climate catastrophe, it would be unjust for it to occur outside of anything but keeping the strictest public interest in mind. 
That is to say, we need to support the continued inhabitation of X because it provides Y to the people at large. Now, of course, I'm fully aware that the front line of climate change is increasingly not just Florida or Hawaii or California, which is also seeing insurance company withdrawal. The front line of climate change is soon enough going to be everywhere, which means that ultimately the inhabitancy of anyone anywhere will only be morally justifiably supported by the public if it provides a public benefit. I am also aware that this does sound a lot like the socialistic climate change agenda that so many on the political right fear and loathe. That's because it kind of is. However, it's not the result of some shadowy conspiracy. It is the inevitable reality that emerges from the rational self-interested logic that drives marketplace thinking, clashing with our feelings of empathy and sense of fairness. Now, of course, that we move in this direction isn't absolutely inevitable. One option is that we just let things collapse around us. The metaphorical and literal floodwater drowning out everyone but those on the highest mounds of wealth. Another option is an inverted version of what I first described, where we do subject people to increasing climate change survival limitations, but to the service of a narrow elite rather than broader society. Those two options, of course, are more or less on a continuum rather than distinct destinations. Regardless, it's clear enough that the current way we go about doing things will not last. No matter what your political opinion or preference is, they're more or less worthless if they're not anchored around the progression of things as described in this video, barring some massive geoengineering solution to the problem of climate change, which, more likely than not, will be a product of one of the features described here. Because we kind of already are in that feature, and so far it's leaning towards the collapse and regimentation outcome. Hopefully, with more people thinking about this issue for what it really is, we'll get something better. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment.